Gentlemen from Penn State, three-time national champion, Aaron. Congratulations. Um, thoughts and emotions on hearing that. I'm um, just blessed and grateful. Like I said, um, everything I have is from God. He gives me the abilities to wrestle. So when I go out there, just if I'm defending anything, it's what He's given me, and it's to preach about Him. So um, I'm just blessed and grateful that He's using me because I'm no better than anyone. You know, we all fall short of the glory, but um, He chose me for this, so I'm blessed. Aaron Brooks is a three-time NCAA wrestling champion. He does not shy away from publicly professing his faith in Jesus Christ. But this time, he said something we completely agree with, but is under fire for speaking the truth. First up, after winning uh, his third national title, uh, Penn State's Aaron Brooks credited his success to his faith and made some additional statements that some people uh, think proved to be problematic. David, I know, uh, share uh, a strong faith. How does that help you on a night like tonight? Um, it's everything. Christ's resurrection is everything. Not just his life, but his death and resurrection. You can only get that through him, the Holy Spirit only through him. No false prophets, no Muhammad, no anyone else. Only Jesus Christ himself. Aaron made those remarks after winning his third consecutive individual title for Penn State. First, we live in a society where many people get offended whenever the name of Jesus is mentioned, except when celebrities and athletes publicly mock him. While many people took to social media to criticize Aaron for insulting Prophet Muhammad, we don't see any such insult in his statement. He gave all the glory to Jesus and not anyone else. You will be persecuted. Why? End of verse 12. For my name sake. They persecute you because they hate me. They persecute you because they hate me. That's the issue. It isn't that Christians are unkind, unlovable, not nice. It's what they represent that the unregenerate Jews and Gentiles hate. They represent the gospel, which indicts all these as sinners on their way to hell who need to repent and believe in Jesus Christ, and that's the only way to be saved. They hate that message. They hate the Christ of the gospel. Aaron Brooks' boldness to profess his faith in God publicly should be an indictment to many Christians who are afraid to share their faith publicly or speak the truth that Jesus is the only way to heaven and that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved, according to Acts 4, verse 12. Bold. <laughs> Bold move from him. You know, he could have just said, like, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and ended it there. But you know what? I appreciate this. Yeah. And uh, let's get into it a little bit. You know, everyone always gets so offended if you, you know, blaspheme against Muhammad, for yeah. example, if you call him a false prophet, or maybe you say he was wrong, or maybe you, you know, bring up the fact that he, uh, he, he, he beat his six-year-old wife, or sorry, he smacked her, but only uh, creating bruises where you couldn't see them, and very likely only consummated when she was nine, and before that he humped her thighs, uh, and called for the deaths of Jews and Christians as his final words. But even so much as perhaps drawing Muhammad, right, is, is mm. considered blasphemy. But here's the thing, when people say, oh, calling Muhammad is blasphemy, there's no reason to do that and be offensive, I think some of the history is important here. The entire religion of Islam, and by the way, I'm not saying that you should go around and insult Muslims. Of course not. No. But what Muhammad said, and if you read the Quran, is blasphemy against the entire premise of Islam is blasphemy against Christianity because it says that Jesus Christ was never crucified. His body was swapped. And the only evidence they have that his body was swapped was because Muhammad said so. That's saying that Christians believe in a false incarnation of God, in a false son of God. Look, and we say, hey, that's fine. You go ahead and you believe it. You know, hell's real and it sucks. That's what Christians believe. But then... If you say, hold on a second, Muhammad saying that Jesus isn't who he said he was is kind of blasphemous, and that makes him a false prophet, that's unacceptable. There are certainly more, but the two central pillars on which Christianity stands are love and truth. Jesus commands us to love people, even our enemies. And because we are called to love, we must speak the truth to people. Therefore, telling people they can only get eternal life through Jesus Christ is the truth and the loving thing to say. Either Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him, God the Son, or He is not. And if He is who He claims to be, anyone who denies Jesus' claim is bearing false witness and is a false prophet. 
If the Prophet Muhammad says that Jesus Christ was never crucified and that his body was swapped, to Christians, that makes him a false prophet, and it is not an insult. We believe that Jesus Christ died and rose on the third day. While not surprised, the level of attacks on Mr. Brooks is ridiculous. This Twitter user tweeted, Disgusting! But he can say what he wants. Why is the NCAA promoting this anti-Muslim rhetoric? What a bankrupt non-profit. While some people are offended by Aaron's statement, others support him. Strangely, the original video has since been removed by NCAA wrestling. Talking about how quickly people get offended, ironically, these same people were probably silent when people publicly made fun of Jesus Christ. In any case, we applaud Aaron for not being ashamed to express his faith in Jesus publicly. Power and finesse. Your calling card. The Holy Spirit. What, what, what? Acts, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Power. Holy Spirit power. That's everything. That's where it's from. Where'd the finesse come from? Holy Spirit as well. <laughs> uh, mom and dad, maybe. Yeah. A little bit of both, but oh God. I put in perspective winning three of these in a row. In dominating fashion, by the way. I'm blessed. Um, God used me. He gives me this platform for this right here. To exalt. So that's all it's for. When I'm suffering, cutting weight, home from, not away from my family, it's all for him. So it's all for his glory. Enjoy it. Put in the time and the sacrifices. Good Congratulations, Aaron. You can't help but love and appreciate Aaron Brooks' spirit. While college wrestling is a very competitive sport, Brooks recognizes that God is the ultimate source of his life. That reflects how he treats others, including Northern Iowa's Parker Kikaisen, who he defeated in the NCAA final. He still calls him a brother in Christ. Fourth time in college you've wrestled him, including the All-Star Meet. You wrestled him in high school for world teams. How do you stay fresh and motivated against a guy like Parker Kikaisen? Man, Parker, he's my brother in Christ, you know. Um, iron sharpens iron, and like I said, every time I know I got him, uh, I got to bring it, you know. So him and his coaching staff, um, very blessed as well. So, you know, I said, I know I'm Russell Parker, it's going to be a good match. Fellow believers in Jesus Christ, our eyes should be fixed on God regardless of what comes our way, whether good or bad. It is refreshing to see a young college athlete giving God all the glory, whether he won or lost a game. Yeah, sure. okay. yeah. Reflect back to when you were in the EAP and Kevin Jackson took you to Midlands. I think mm-hmm. you were at 174. I think you got beat by a, a maybe a 24-year-old guy from Army. Reflect yeah. on that experience to now when you're a three-timer. Um... I said, hey, I'm, I'm grateful for that. You know, even those things, that part of my life, um, just learning, learning every day. You know, so going through that, that was a darker place for me in my life. But I suffered, and I got stronger, and it brought me closer to God. And uh, that was me on my knees praying. You know, after that season of my life, so I'm um, grateful for all of it. You know. While an attack on Aaron Brooks is swift and brutal, Jesus forewarned us that anyone who believes in him would be hated, not because they've done anything wrong, but because they believed in the name of Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Matthew 10, verse 22. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. They help get biblical truth to those in darkness. God bless you. But Jesus gives them hope in verse 13, and He says this, It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. I love that. It's going to open up the door for you to take the gospel everywhere. You remember what Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, that since he was a prisoner, the gospel was furthered by his chains? And even brought into Caesar's household so that he had said, led some in Caesar's, Caesar's household to the knowledge of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Persecution of the church always brings gospel opportunity. Persecution of the church always purifies the church. Persecution of the church always makes the church strong. It makes the church bold. Persecution of Christians has allowed Christians to give strong, bold, confident, faithful testimony to the glory of the gospel. You read Fox's Book of Martyrs. I've been reading it my whole life, just pieces and bits and pieces and over and over again. And you hear these incredibly stirring, beautiful testimonies of those who were brought to the edge of the the flames 
about to be burned to death or to the edge of the sword or the guillotine for their love for Christ and how powerful their testimony is and how resounding. And so in verse 14 the Lord says, make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. Don't worry about this. Don't think you've got to... This is literally technical language in the Greek for preparing and rehearsing a speech. Don't do that. Make up your minds not to literally beforehand practice what you're going to say. No need. Why? Because. Verse 15, I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. Yes, on the world stage there will come relentless persecution. Don't worry. It's going to come. You need to know it's going to come because that will insulate you against it. You don't need to be surprised by this. These things they will do because they have not known the Father or Me. Apostle Paul says, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall shall suffer persecution. Turn to Paul. Before his execution, Paul encountered fierce opposition from the Jews primarily. His bold, fearless preaching of the gospel astonished and enraged the Jewish population in Damascus who then sought to kill him. He had to flee for his life. Um, Acts chapter 9, he was lowered from the city wall at night in a basket. The incident really charted the course for the rest of Paul's life. He was always on the run. Gentile persecution was just getting started, and it's still going on today. We urge everyone to pray for Aaron, that his faith in Jesus Christ remains strong and that he will continue to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, even when he is canceled and persecuted.